Hi, how are you? Today we're going to be doing Solar Ovens 101. The DNR of South Carolina tells me that we have 218 days of sunny to partly cloudy weather. Well, all this week has not been any of those days. It's rain, it's been cloudy. Although the sun has come out today, it's too intermittent to solar cook. So, we're inside and we're going to do solar ovens. I normally teach a class that's an hour and a half to three hours long, depending on what we're doing. So I'm going to try to condense that to 15 or 20 minutes. So bear with me. I'm going to talk fast and give you just the basics. Starting with, there are three types of solar ovens. There is a panel cooker, a box cooker, and a parabolic. I will not be demonstrating the parabolic because I don't use them. They are, they can be like a satellite dish covered in mirrors. They can be like a butterfly covered in mirrors. They can get up to temperatures of 1500 degrees. I call it instant fire. And they can be very dangerous but very useful. You, they need constant supervision. You can do a pressure cooker with them. Um, scrambled eggs is like that. They're very popular in China and Finland, Switzerland, where there's a lot of snow, but I don't use them. I find that these two ovens do everything I need. So why worry about starting a fire? So let's start with the panel cooker. This is called a Cook It. This I got from Solar Cookers International. I don't sell them or anything. But it's called the Solar Cook It. It folds up this small, and that's why I like it. I can put it in my backpack. In fact, my husband and I both have one in our backpacks. You can use them for signaling if you need to, but you can pasteurize water, boil water, bake bread, cook anything in these. They get up to about 225. They're not going to get as high of a temperature as a box oven, but sometimes that's all you need. Now in the winter time, they're not as efficient as they are in the summer, but um, you can still uh, pasteurize water. Speaking of pasteurizing water, let me show you this to begin with. It's called a WAPI. Water Pasteurization Indicator. I got this one from my company, the Sun Oven International, that sells this oven. But Solar Cookers International also sells them. I've had them in the past. They were shaped a little different. This was shaped the same, but they had a wire on each end. I happen to like this one better. Um, they're only they're under ten dollars, and that's shipping and handling and everything. So there's not a reason. There's no reason not to have several of them. It comes with a little case to keep it in, and what you do is you close up the case. And there's a green, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's a green soy wax in the tube. You take the soy wax at the top, put it in the bottom, there's a little hole in the bottom, put it in the bottom, there you go, and you're going to float this in your pot or your bottle or whatever you have it in. And when this, the green soy wax drops to the bottom, you leave it for six minutes. You've now reached 150 degrees. Your water has been pasteurized and is safe to drink. Now, um, this is good for water, milk, any other temperature, any other liquid you want to put it in to sanitize or pasteurize. Um, milk's a little higher temperature, and I'll have to look that up and stick it on the video for you. But when you're done with it, you just open this back up, pop it out. It's totally reusable. Oh, there you go. Put it back in here, and the next time you use it, the soy wax will be at the bottom, but now you're going to turn it around to the top. And then you store it. It comes in a little case like this, and it's called a WAPI, W-A-P-I, Water Pasteurization Indicator. I actually have six of these in my backpack because I don't know if I'm going to have little cans or little jars or what I'm going to have to pasteurize water. If I had just a small bottle and the box wouldn't fit in, I would devise some kind of string to take to the end and, and drop it in the bottle. I actually like the ones with the strings, but I like also having a case. So that's a WAPI. Now, let's get back to the ovens. The panel oven comes with closed pins, which you just pop this in there. It, it folds out. It's covered in mylar. You could make one of these out of cardboard and aluminum foil. I'll see if I can get the dimensions for you, a website with dimensions, and I'll put it on the video. But uh, YouTube is full of it. Solar Cookers International, I believe, has one. I'll double check for you. Um, but I have several of these. I give them away for Christmas. Uh, they cost $30. The reason they're so expensive, it costs me about $3 to make them. But the shipping and handling is outrageous. 
but all of the money that's nonprofit, all the money goes towards shipping these to uh, third world countries, and it's actually saving people's lives because they can pasteurize water and, and be able to cook. And I have to walk miles and miles for wood. So I don't mind paying a little bit more for something that uh, is going to help other people. If I, if I could get them for $3, I would, but I can't. So they're about $30. Um, all right, they also come with, and let me see if I can find what I did with it. Oh, they come with a couple of these oven cookie bags, the kind you cook turkeys in. So what you do, it's very simple. I take a, a thermometer, I take it out of the package, and I put it inside so I know the interior temperature of my bag. Then I take my pot with my food in it, put it inside the bag, then I take my handy dandy Walmart thermometer with the probe, put that inside my food, probe outside, or the thermometer outside, and I close it up, and I normally use uh, the coated rubber, uh, rubber bands girls use in their hair to, to close this up. But you could use a clothespin, but I like the rubber bands, I think it works better. See, inside, and your probe is out here, your, your thermometer. Set your temperature and it will beep when your food is done. You want to know the interior temperature of your bag as well as the interior temperature of your food. To control the temperature of the oven, this flap goes up and down. I've got it at, at its highest point. But if you were doing something like dehydrating and you wanted a, a lower temperature, you could do that by just lowering the flap or turning it away from the sun a little bit. The um, way you want to set this up is facing solar south or south. Get your um, directional finder out and find it. And make sure when you place it, whether it's in the morning or early afternoon, there are no shadows on the side. If you want to cook faster, you keep turning it every 30 minutes as the sun turns to where there are no shadows. If you want to leave it all day and go to work, that's fine. Nothing's going to burn. I've put rice in here, taken off for a couple hours and lost track of time and went, oh no, the rice is going to stick like it does in my normal on my stove. Came back, it was perfect. That was like four hours. You can't, rice will not stick. You can't burn anything in here. The other thing you might do is dry out bread a little bit, but even that's difficult to do. Makes you better cook. So that is the, the cook it. And like I said, if you are in a situation where you need to signal, you can use this for signaling. Also, if you've built a fire and you want to use this to put behind the fire to reflect back on you, works very well for that as well. Like I said, um, I, co I collect aluminum foil. I collect a lot of it. Because with aluminum foil, I can make just about anything. And it um, doesn't take a lot to make a solar oven, a small one. I think everyone needs at least a cook it, at least. Because you want to make sure you have a way to cook your food and pasteurize your water. So a cook it's $30. These are about $10. So for $40, you can be set for pasteurizing your water and cooking your food. One thing I didn't tell you. In the panel cooker, you want to use a brick or a stone, three stones, or a trivet, something like that. I've used three stones before, about the same size, and set my pot on it. You want the air circulating underneath it because the UV rays are coming into the, into the collector, the pot. And they're in this one, they're in the bag. And you want those UV, once the UV, sorry, once the UV rays come into the pot, they come in as uh, short UV rays. Once they're in there, they become long UV rays, so they can't escape. So you want them circulating around the pot to get more even heating. Remember, your oven cooks from the top down, or at the bottom up. This cooks from the top down and all around. So use something on the bottom of your pot in the panel cookers. It can be a brick, three stones, anything like that. All right, let me get rid of this. Now this one's going to be a little more difficult to demonstrate because it's so large and I'm on a table. Normally I would be demonstrating it on the ground, but I'll do the best I can. This is a sun oven. Now for years I cooked in a box oven made out of cardboard boxes, two of them, and they were insulated with, um, well I've done several different ones insulated with all different kinds of things from newspaper to styrofoam, um, food grade styrofoam. Uh, but this one I finally broke down and bought one and I liked them so much I became a dealer. I wanted to make sure people could buy them at a discount. That way I can make more solar chefs. 
But let me tell you about this one. There's a lot of them on the market. There's even one called the Sports Solar Oven that is a hybrid. You can, it's a solar oven, but you can also plug it in the house and use electricity. I don't want to use anything where I need electricity, but if you've got solar panels and battery set up and you want to plug that in and, and use that, you can. But this one, let me tell you about this one. It's called the Global Sun Oven. It looks like a suitcase, has a handle, has a leg in the back, which I'm going to demonstrate in a minute, will um, change the position of it because you want to make sure there's no shadows in the box. The same with the other one. Less shadows, more sunlight. All right, let me set it up. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to pull the leg out. And it has about 12 positions on the back here. I'm going to set it at the highest so you can see better. Okay? And hopefully this light won't interfere. Let me come around. Now when you first get it, you're going to open it up. And it's going to have a blue film that looks like this blue. I left this on here just so I could show you. It's a blue film, and it's covering all of the panels. And these panels are like a lightweight aluminum. I don't know exactly what they're made out of. I haven't researched it, but they work. I clean them with Windex to keep them clean. You want to make sure nothing like this is, is shadowing it. You want to make sure that the trees aren't getting any shadows in here. Now, there is a, um, a little screw right here at the bottom to secure this bottom panel. There we go. Keeps it from blowing around. This is a glass panel. There's an interior thermometer to tell you the interior temperature of your oven. So if you're preheating, you want to make sure you get that high temperature before you put your bread in or whatever. This is called a levelator. It swings back and forth. It's removable. Just pops off the little screws here. For cleaning. When you use the leg, you're going to change the angle of your oven. So you don't want your bread or your cakes to be like this. So that's what the levelator does. I really like that. Um, if you have a really tall pot and you want to take out the levelator, you can. Just put a trivet or something underneath your pot so you get that air circulation. With this levelator, I'm getting my air circulation so I don't have to put a trivet in there. Um, there's a gasket that runs along here. This gives you a really tight seal. So let me get a pot and show you how this works. Now when you first clean it, you're going to get a pot about this size, and you're going to fill it full about three-fourths of the way with water. And you're going to put it into there. You're not going to put the lid on it. And then you're going to take good old Dawn Dish Detergent and you're going to do it all in there, a whole bunch of it. And then you're going to close this up and you're going to sit this in the sun all day long. And then when you come back out, you're going to put your sunglasses on like you did when you first put it in there and get your oven mittens because this is an oven and it will burn your hands. And you're going to open it up and you're going to take a, a pair of tongs and a rag. And you're going to dip that, dip that in there. Remember, the levelator's not in here. You're going to clean that separately. Um, what I do is I actually take the pot out and sit on the sidewalk. And I take the, the tongs and I really scrub it well. Some people never have to scrub their oven. I had to do it twice. Some people only do it once. But otherwise, you'll get a plastic taste in your food. Because this is made out of plastic and inexpensive wood and it's insulated very well. Um, you're going to clean that out really well. And I do put a lot of water in it. And it doesn't seem to affect it anyway. It's plastic inside. And then I take it, I dry it out, and then I use a clean rag, clean water, and do it with clean water. And then I dry it out again. I had to do it twice, but I've talked to people who only had to do it once, and some people never had to do it. The first thing you're going to cook in this oven are cookies. You're going to go to the store and get the inexpensive kind that, that uh, they come in a roll and you chop them up. Any kind of inexpensive cookie that's real easy. And you're going to bake cookies in here. The reason you want to do cookies is because if there's any plastic taste left in the oven, it's going to show up in the cookies. When you bite into the cookie, if you taste plastic, got to clean it again. So you keep baking cookies until they taste like cookies. And um, like I said, it took me twice. Some people, they bake cookies the first time, it's fine. Uh, some people, it's only once. So I just happen to get it twice. So um, now I'm going to bake my food. All right, so I take my pot with my food in it. I take my probe, my handy dandy Walmart probe, put it in here, thread it through there, put it into my meat or whatever I'm cooking, put my lid on, 
close it up. There's two little thing with flutches here, to, little screws and, and, and hooks to keep it down tight. And uh, set my temperature. Now I know the interior uh, temperature of my food as well as the exterior temperature inside the oven. Um, so you want to make sure if you're baking bread between 10 and 1. You don't want to bake it in the afternoon. You want the highest temperature possible. So I usually put my bread in about 11. And then after my bread's baked, in the summertime it takes me about an hour. It's taking me as long as two hours if, if you know it's colder outside and the sun's at a different angle. I can cook in snow. With, it can be six feet of snow on the ground. It all has to do with the rays of the sun. Remember, the UV rays are short and they come into the glass, then they turn into long UV, UV rays. And if you have a very well insulated oven, they can't escape. And so they're going to stay in there cooking. And the better insulation you have, the higher temperatures. The uh, cardboard box ovens I told you I used to cook in, I never could get them insulated enough to get up to 350 or 325. I usually was around 225. I've even made, um, for my grandson who's in kindergarten, I made uh, ovens out of pizza boxes and insulated them. And we, we did s'mores in there and we made hot dogs and things like that. But, you know, I couldn't get up to really high temperatures. Um, so that's why I like this oven. So if you're baking bread, you want to bake it in the morning. If you're baking meat, you want to make sure that it's a day that's not going to have clouds and you're going to have full sun all day. Meat, I'm very picky about my meat. Um, that's why I tell you to use the, the uh, beeping thermometer because you can't see inside the pot. You can use glass, glass lids and I, I do have a lid that fits on this pot that is glass. And sometimes if I'm baking a cake, something like that, a dunk cake, I will put a glass lid on it because I want to see it. I want to see what's going on inside. So you can use a glass lid. You just have to make sure it has a very tight seal because you don't want any, um, any steam or uh, heat escaping. Now, as you've seen in some of my videos, the glass will steam up. So you're not going to be able to see the temperature anyway. Uh, you might be able to see that, but maybe not. That's why you want the interior probe. Uh, between the WAPI and, and the interior thermometer are the two best things you can buy if you're going to have solar ovens. Uh, let's see what else can I tell you. That's about it. And hopefully I haven't gone over 20 minutes. But if I did, I'm sorry. And I'll try to get all those, uh, that information up for you on the video. If you have any questions, email me please. SolarChef1, the number one, at Hotmail.com. And I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you.